discovered Joyce had left behind a final recording in his panic to escape the Allies. This is Germany calling, calling for the last time from Station Hamburg. If only we had to agree, the German people of Danzig should go back to the Reich, then we might have had peace. Within hours of seizing Radio Hamburg, Jeffrey took the microphone last used by Joyce just two days earlier and broadcast an historic announcement to Britain and Germany. After 12 years, this was the moment democracy returned to German media and it would be delivered by a British soldier born in Berlin. This is Radio Hamburg, a station of the Allied military government. Yeah, Here, Prince Yeah. A long time ago. Less than four weeks later, Jeffrey would finally come face to face with the most infamous traitor of the Second World War. Now in northern Italy, Commando Colin Anson was frantically trying to deal with a huge number of surrendering enemy troops. Half the German army seemed to fall on us in the front car there sat a general with a stony face. Gradually you could see the red rising out of his equally red collar with the golden wheat sheaves on and up into his cheeks forming little red cheeks. And then after a little while suddenly he crowed in that peculiar crowing tone officer, uh, general officers sometimes seem to uh, adopt. Oh, what's the matter here? Is there no camp commandant? I'm a general. And on the word general, I swear to you, he hit the top seat. As a boy, Colin had seen his father denounced and thrown into a concentration camp where he was murdered. Now he was in charge. And I was not in the mood and found it inappropriate to be bossed about by a German general under these conditions. So I said, Abwarten, Ihre Leute kommen zuerst dran. Wait for it, your men come first. And I've never seen a jaw drop quite as far as that in my life. From Hamburg, Jeffrey moved to the Danish border. His new brief was to take control of a newspaper in Flensburg. He took a truck into a nearby forest to collect firewood with colleague Bertie Licorice. We just stepped out to find some firewood and loaded it into our little truck. And from some little way away came a scruffy individual. Less than a month earlier, Jeffrey had broadcast from William Joyce's microphone. Now, more than 100 miles away, he was about to come face to face with the Allies' tormentor-in-chief. So I challenged him and asked him if he was William Joyce. He said, no, I'm not William Joyce, I'm Fritz Hansen. And uh, I was suspicious of, of the hand going back into his pocket, and I, I pulled out my gun and I fired and he fell to the ground. As he heard the shot, uh, Bertie Licorice came running. Geoffrey had shot William Joyce, Lord Haw Haw, in the buttocks. Britain's most notorious traitor had been captured by a German refugee in a British army uniform. I think the irony has struck me then. I mean, the irony of having spoken from his microphone and having met him here like four weeks later, he has been arrested after all these years by somebody who fundamentally is a German Jew. Didn't realize that he was going to be tried as a traitor and hanged. As the huge task of dismantling Nazi Germany got underway, Britain's German recruits were now heading towards Berlin. 
Many were desperate to find out what had happened to loved ones who had not managed to escape. Commando Colin Anson had lost contact with his mother more than five years ago. I asked whether it would be possible to be stationed somewhere in the Frankfurt area so that I might look for my mother. Now a British soldier, Colin was back in the country where he was born, but it was no longer home. Moving about in Frankfurt was a very strange experience. Uh, to, to walk along the streets I had been familiar with, which were now in some disrepair, of course, but with the ghost of a German schoolboy walking ahead with whom I had nothing in common anymore at all. Against all the odds, his mother, who was born a Protestant, had survived. I succeeded in finding my mother, and uh, uh, it was a great joy to be back together again. She had survived the war uh, in Frankfurt. After finding his mother alive, Colin now turned his attention to the betrayal of his father. I obtained the files of his case, and I learned the name of the man who had actually denounced him. How would Colin, a special forces commander, react to discovering the identity of the man who had sealed his father's fate? It would have been easy to pay this lockkeeper a little visit. all my instincts to want to pursue a private uh, revenge of that sort. Less than seven years after experiencing the horror of Dachau, Willy Field entered Berlin. It was the ultimate confirmation that Hitler and the Nazis had finally been defeated. The devastation was absolutely tremendous. It really was almost 90% destroyed. It, it really looked absolutely, I mean, unbelievable bad. At last, Willy could celebrate victory and savor his personal role in the defeat of the Nazis. And as a crowning reward, Willie's Eighth Hussars were asked to take part in a victory parade on the Charlottenburg Chaussee. That there was a little refugee from Germany taking part in the victory parade. For me personally, I was very proud of it, yes. Churchill's German army had returned to their place of birth, but they now realized that nothing would be the same again. There would be no going back. One would assume that uh, once Hitler was overthrown, that these people would say it'd be easy just to return, but there was, for many would say there was nothing to return to. I have hardly ever been back to Germany. I don't particularly feel drawn to go back. We came in to England most grateful because that saved our life. But how did it feel for a German to kill a German? If I hadn't done it, if Germany had won the war, I wouldn't be here talking to you and remember that I lost part of my family in uh, German concentration camps. I'll be honest with you, I was never sorry at that time. That I was never sorry. I still don't feel sorry what uh, happened to them then. It's a dreadful thing to say now, but it is, it, it is, this is how I feel.
there, there was no feeling of revenge. There was a feeling of one. I, I didn't have anything against the Germans as such, except for their distressing lack of uh, what my father called civil courage. They had played a vital role in the defeat of Nazi Germany. Some would stay on, at least for a while, and help rebuild the country that was once home. I didn't have a sense of hate. There was a sense of, well, gratitude, I think, to start with, that um, um, I didn't lose a member of the family. July 1946, I was naturalized. And then I was a British subject. Worked out perfectly nicely in the end. 